WCM, this is Pastor Chad, still bunkered down in Fort Williams. And uh, I am just sending to you a, here a daily devotion that I would like to share with you today. Over the course of our time in quarantine, our church is going to be sending out daily devotions to, to uh, you. We'll be posting them on Facebook, posting them on our webpage. What we want to do is we want you to remain connected even though we're in quarantine and even though we're in isolation. We are UCM, United, Centered, and Maturing in Christ, and we want to continue that process even though we are currently separated. So but through Pastor Noah and myself and different people from our congregation are going to send out these daily devotions, about five minutes long. Uh, I would encourage you as you wake up in the morning to tune in, listen to these devotions for some encouragement, or maybe gather your family in the evening and listen to the five-minute devotion and talk to one another about these things, or uh, maybe even post some comments on Facebook below to stay connected with one another in the body of Christ while we remain in isolation. Well, today I want to bring you one of my favorite books. It's the book of Philippians. And why I love that book is because it's the book of joy. Many of you Sunday school graduates know that in the book of Philippians, that word joy is used 19 times. That means five times a chapter, Paul is talking about joy. And for me, when I begin to feel anxious and I start uh, becoming discouraged, I always turn back to the book of Philippians to find my encouragement and to remember the source of my joy. But what is interesting here, outside of the word of joy, Paul uses another word very frequently in the book of Philippians. And that is the word mind or the word think or remember, something to which he is calling us to use our minds. In fact, he calls us to do that 16 separate times. And the connection's quite clear that if you want to have joy, it doesn't come mystically, it doesn't come magically, but it comes mentally. And that evidence is found here in chapter 4 of Philippians. There, there's a verse that many of you know. It says, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, uh, uh, present your request to God. Uh, and, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. But right after that, after he says, don't be anxious, he gives us this great ver ver uh, uh, verse to remember. He says in verse 8, he says, finally, brothers... Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about those things. If you want to have joy restored unto you, if you want to overcome your anxiousness, it comes by thinking on those things that are lovely and pure and, and true. Primarily thinking on Christ. He embodies all of those things. Paul says, start thinking about the right things. And there is a wellspring of joy that is below the surface that we can tap if we start thinking about the things that Christ wants us to think about and we start focusing our minds on him. I'm reminded of the story I heard many years ago about a man by the name of Mr. Yates who was uh, a farmer during the Depression, and he owned a big portion of land in the state of Texas in the United States. And, and he was a sheep farmer, and, and it wasn't going well, and, and he was about ready to lose his farm due to the principal and interest on his um, ranch was, was so great, and he wasn't making enough income. And, and he had little money for food or little money for clothing, and, and he even received government subsidies to, to be able to live. Day after day, he would graze his sheep, wondering, how am I going to make it? How am I going to make it? And about three weeks before the time of his foreclosure, a, 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 an organization called the Transcontinental Oil Company came and asked if they could excavate on his ranch. He certainly said that would be fine. And when they dug, they got down to the 340 meters, and they found this reserve of oil that was producing 80,000 barrels a day. Millions of barrels every year that produce for more than 30 years. Mr. Yates went from abject poverty to wealth overnight. He became one of America's most wealthy individuals after that. And to think that he owned it all. The day he purchased the land is the day he received the oil and mineral rights. Mineral rights. But he had been living on government subsidies. 
Yates became rich the moment he purchased the land, and yet he lived in poverty until he went below the surface. The problem, he didn't know that it was there even though he owned it. I, I think that many people in the body of Christ live in abject poverty when it comes to joy because they haven't gone below the surface, or maybe I should say above the surface, way above the surface, and they haven't focused their attention on on Christ. They've been focusing on the barren land. They've been focusing on the obstacles that are everywhere. Yet Paul says, turn your minds to Christ. Think of the things that he has done, and we can find the wellspring of joy, even in adverse situations. I want to encourage you, UCMers, to go deeper. At this time when we're in isolation, go below the surface Go and put your minds on the things of Christ. Don't let your minds be consumed with all of the swirling data. Listen, I'm getting it too. I'm hearing it on social media. I'm, it's hard for me with all this data to keep my focus on Christ. And yet I know that that is the source of my joy. I know that that helps me overcome my anxiousness. And Paul says, think on those things. Think on the great things of Christ. Think of all the treasure, the joy found in him. Think of what awaits us in our heavenly home. Paul says, think on whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. Think on those things. Christ embodies all of that in this Lenten season. I encourage you to take some time and focus on Christ and the treasure that is found in him because that's where we can find our greatest joy when we look to the hope that we have in Christ. I pray you all will find that joy and that hope even though we are all facing very adverse circumstances in our lives right now. Think on Christ. God bless and all of our thoughts, our prayers are with you and, and we hope to be able to see you soon. Have a good day.